Hello, hello, everybody. I am Kristen, AKA Like Water, and welcome to In Session. I'm super, super excited for this incredible conversation focused on Ableton Live and Push for Songwriters with Thomas Piper. I'm super excited again for who I'm joined by. So I'm joined by Mari Sullivan and Thomas Piper. Uh, let's start with you, Mari. Can you let us know uh, your preferred gender pronouns and a bit about yourself? Yeah, hi everyone. Um, so yeah, I'm Mari. She, her are my pronouns. And um, I am one of the US brand managers at Ableton um, and just was very fortuitously connected with Kristen to put on one of these events. Um, and we at Ableton know Thomas to be a really incredible Ableton user, both as a songwriter and a performer. So thought he would be the perfect person to share some knowledge with you. Awesome. Love it. Super excited. Thank you, Mari. And Thomas, would you like to share your preferred gender pronouns and a bit about who you are? Oh, you're muted, Thomas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gotta love Zoom. Too many things to remember. Hey, there you go. There, we there go. you are. <laughs> um, he, him, Thomas Piper, um, singer, songwriter, producer, um, photographer, videographer, runs People's Republic of Sound, and um, was just so happy to do this and share some stuff with everyone. Um, done some so far shows, known Ableton, and been a user since version three. Yeah. Old Love school. It. So, um, <laughs> Yeah. So, um, yeah, I guess that's it. <laughs> okay, perfect. Awesome. Well, I'm super excited, Thomas. This is incredible. I hope you all are excited. Those of you that are tuning in, it's going to be an incredible conversation. But a bit before we jump in, um, Mari and Thomas are going to be covering songwriting with Ableton and Push for the first 45 minutes. And then I'll come back for the last 15 minutes for open Q&A at the end. So please, please, please submit any questions that you have throughout the conversation using the Q&A function at the bottom of your Zoom screen. And we'll try our very, very best to get to all the questions or as many questions as possible. So remember, if you have anything that pops up in your mind, anything you wanna know, please use that Q&A function at the bottom. I'll also remind you in just a bit because I'm going to go into our housekeeping items that we just wanna cover. So this is a supportive and uplifting space so please, please, please keep that in mind as we get into the conversation. Also, please feel free to use the chat um, function to share where you're tuning in from. I see some of you already have. You got Arizona, you got uh, South Africa showing so much love. Um, so yeah, please jump in there. Let us know where you're tuning in from, what you're excited to hear about. Um, and again, make sure you change that little blue button from panelists to panelists and attendees so we all can join in on this conversation and see what we're all discussing. And also, last but not least, again, the Q&A function. When you have any questions, there's a Q&A little button you can press, type in your questions, you can submit it anonymously, or you can share your name. Um, and we'll gather all of those and share those questions and hopefully get those answered toward the end of the webinar. And also at the end, you're, you'll get a survey to just let us know how you felt about the about the webinar and anything else that you want us to use as topics to bring to you for another in session. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Mari and Thomas for this incredible, incredible in session. And I will be back a bit later. Um, thank you, guys. Awesome. Thanks, Kristen. So <laughs> no basically what we've got for you today, Thomas is going to perform a song for us. Um, which I'm so excited to see. And then he and I are just going to dig into some questions um, regarding live performance and songwriting um, with Live and Push. And so, um, Thomas, whenever you're ready, um, I, I'm not sure if you already did it, but remember to share the computer sound and then yeah. we're good to go. Nice. What's up, y'all? Thomas Piper again. Um, let me just get a little... space i should be comfortable right all right um this song's called um change your life we could talk about that later um yeah let me just go Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Ja.
Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm sure just be imagining the uh, sound of applause because I'm sure everyone in the chat is saying all sorts of awesome things. Incredible. Woo. Thank you. Dope ending. What's that magical remote? <laughs> yeah, I have the same question. So um, why don't we start off? I mean, first of all, thanks so much for performing that for us and on Zoom, which is never easy with latency and all that kind of stuff. That was yeah. like just really killer. So thanks for doing that. An awesome job pulling that off. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> um, do you want to tell us just like the elements of your live set here? Like what, what you're working with? Um, okay. Um, my live set, the Moog is not always there. Um, that's actually for my beat design show, which is my YouTube channel do it every week so i just kept it here but usually it's just it's to push ableton live 11 uh, uh a new m1 macbook air believe it or not so it does work um uh a focus right interface um i record with if you, you can't see back there but like the ua stuff Got a bunch of the UA stuff, but the focus right's just easier to carry. Um, sometimes a rolly, um, one of these rolly blocks, cool. but mainly this rolly block to do um, stutters and filters and um, and also to free me if I want to like move around because it doesn't have a cord. It's Bluetooth. It's wireless Bluetooth. That's amazing. What yeah, a cool yeah. piece of gear. Yeah, yeah. Roly's cool. I, I've done stuff with them, too. They're they a great little company. Awesome. It works really well with Ableton. They actually have um template that kind of locks up. So if I want to do cool things with Ableton, it's not too hard to set up. Almost like the push. Not the same integration, but not as seamless, but still cool. Awesome. Yeah, we had a question. I'm just going to answer this. What is UA stuff? So UA is Universal Audio. It's just a company that makes some like really nice high end interfaces and things like that. Just to answer that question. Um, cool. All right. Well, first of all, let's um, let me just ask a little bit about the song. Obviously, that was like a really inspirational, uplifting song. You want to tell us mm -hmm. a little bit about the song, what project it's from and maybe like inspiration for the song before we dig into some technical stuff? <laughs> um, hmm. The there's a musical inspiration. I won't say too much about that, but um, definitely um, a, a R and B soul inspiration that inspired me to do the music. Um, it's on my Permission to Live album. Um, it's uh, uh, I um, I think it um, I think it had a little bit to do with my son going through certain things so that's what it was like you could change your life kind of vibe so to inspire him in a weird way which i probably never said but now you know um <laughs> um we're getting that insider info yeah you're getting inside info the, the the background of the song um and then um on the it, it was a song that took a while to do in the sense that it grew from an inspiration and it, 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 and then the music came and the lyrics came pretty much at the same time. I thought that I could, you know, make that work. And then the outro was like a, a rehearsal. I rehearsed here and it was uh, like, a, I don't know if you guys can still hear me. It was like, 
it was one of those things where I was already, you know, playing the, the that kind of melody, the melody and the chords, and then I was like, I was just kind of sitting there, turn it around, turn it around, like it was just a jam. Yay! And I was just like, oh, that, that might be cool. So I added that. So it was really done in two pieces, and then I squashed them together on the record as one whole thing, which was cool to do live. I was curious to see, I wonder if I can do that live. Um, so I'm always figuring out new ways to make it feel more, um, you know, um, improvisational and pieces, not just loops. But yeah, so that's how that song came out. Cool. Yeah, it was cool to see you kind of set up a whole second loop in that second part of the song yeah. towards the end. Um, that was really neat. Awesome. Cool. Well, really awesome song. I just want to say someone in the chat said um, that was like their favorite song of yours. So they must be a fan of your um, album. Um, it's one of my favorites. It's actually it probably that and another song called Love Can't Wait are, my, are probably my faves at this point. But it changes. Cool. Always fun to know like an artist's favorite song of their own. It's a hard <laughs> yeah, thing to, to decide. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like uh, you love them all. You know, you love them, but you know what? You love them all at different times. And then sometimes, you know, you're struggling. There's certain songs you you still every time you hear it, you go, "Man, I could have changed this." Or yep, yeah, that type of thing. Which Definitely. I do. <laughs> I'll be like, "Hey," but anyway. Um. So let's dig into a little bit of like what was going on with live and push. So um. So the um controller that's right there in front, that piece of hardware that he was doing most things on, is Ableton's Push Two controller, which um integrates like it's up one of the only other products made by ableton other than the software and just like integrates really seamlessly with the software um so it looked like you were using it to do some live looping yeah to control your loop so um first of all is there a reason that you um, loop with ableton live and push over like a loop pedal and then secondly could you like maybe like just explain or show a little bit how that works all right um well yeah so I, the, the, um, the pedal thing, um, it's funny. I never really used a pedal. Um, I think the best way to explain it is that I, I come from production. Mm. So when I'm, I'm not really live looping in a way, I'm really just making a beat like I am in a studio. Totally. Yeah. So, cool. so when I hit record and play, so if I just hit the record button, go right, um, and I just play something, I'm literally just, it's exactly like using Ableton. And I think that was a thing that, uh, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm an Ableton user since Ableton 3, right? So um, I, I was one of those people who didn't use Ableton for live. I used Ableton at first for sampling. So Ableton was my sample thingy. I used to use Ableton and Logic. And it got to the point where going from Ableton to Logic didn't make sense. It was just like, well, why am I going to Logic? So I just stayed in Ableton. Logic, by the way, is another program um, made by Apple. Um, so I said, no, I'll stay in Ableton. So when it was time to do the shows, it, it, w it was more like my thought process was more like I could bring the studio here and make the song here, right? And break it into pieces so that you can see what's going on. I mean, there's not much to show because I already did it. Like, what you saw was me, basically all I did is hit record, I set up a loop of the, just like I do in the studio where it's ready, like, you know, ready, and I just play it, and it records it, and then I just build it just like I build in the studio. And then, and then I have some things that are preset, obviously, that come afterwards. Yeah, but I was just going to ask that. Yeah, there was some, we could hear some stuff coming in and it synced up like perfectly. That was awesome. Well, right, because everything was done in Ableton. So the idea is like, I don't, I'm not even taking anything out. So that was the other reason why I don't want to leave different um, digital work, work, audio workstations, right? I don't want to leave different DAWs. Um, I'm already here. I'm, that's what I'm doing day to day. So when I need to transfer something, it's pretty easy. It's like, oh, this is the sound. You know, it's already in Ableton. I can just go into the um, Ableton menu where they where all the songs lie and just see the tracks. 
and just drag them over. So I'm not, I'm not reconstructing too much. I'm basically, it's already there. You know what I mean? It, everything's already there because I was already in Ableton. So I just don't have to leave. Right. The and process made, from production to live performance is re- made really easy that way. Yeah. It was, there almost isn't the blur. It's blurred right, in a way. Right. 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 It's not really live in a sense, live and thing. That it, it, it's kind of like everything is real time. You know, it, it, it's just I can make it real time. I could do everything real time. Cool. So it's the same thing, almost like you know how like it, it, I see this with in the film world with like Unreal Engine, mm, where yeah, where the um, the effects are real time. This idea that you got to render is not there. So it's the same thing here, where you know the performance, the, the studio is real time. So I, the innovation in the '60s and the '70s, because that's when the real innovation was, was the studio itself, right? The idea that a studio could be an instrument. Is like 1960s, 1970s, like the Beatles and Stevie Wonder, right? The innovation here is the show can be a studio. The you know, what I mean, live performance, the venue, you taking the whole studio with you, you know, reverb, um, all that stuff is there. So that that's kind of how I, I I deal with it. Awesome. Um, we're so the things that you did have, um like the backing vocals that came in, are you launching those through session view or it, like clips in session view? Or are you working with those in arrangement view? Oh, everything is just session. Yeah, everything is session. Just cool. And when just I make music clips. at home, that's how I make too. I don't Deep go into the other view, yeah. view until later. Cool. Yeah. That's we'll just, get into the, uh, the songwriting yeah. process for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. So, you are uh, obviously really, really skilled at playing push in, in note mode, which is the mode for everyone watching that where you can play it like an instrument where we saw him playing bass and chords. Um, so I know you play keyboard and guitar. Um, and so I'm just kind of curious, like, what is it about playing on push that you really like so much and made it such a big part of your performance? And um, maybe if you could just, just kind of explain how, how uh, that works to our, to our viewers. Uh, all right. Um initially with push it was the size of it all Mm. so more than this is this is like four octaves here right just about four i want to do four right just about four octaves here and four octaves on the matriarch is like that right this is right matriarch's four octaves bang push four octaves is that so th- that was uh, that was it right there that was the first thing cool. the thing was like wow you know everything small you know um you know i mean it has advantages and disadvantages over a, a, a keyboard uh, or you know it's a hybrid right so it's like part guitar part keyboard I mean, and, and I'm, what I mean by guitar is like it's set up like a guitar in a weird way, you know, um, but it's set up like a piano in a weird way. At least, you know what I mean? So the advantage, chords play easier in here, but playing lines and leads are a little harder on the push than the piano. Um, so there's certain things that you have to do. It's an instrument in itself, so you still got to practice. Mm-hmm. Um and you just got practice. I just kind of practice, <laughs> you know. There's, there's no way around it. But um, you know, I liked how the chords were set up. But um, if you're a music theory geek, you you can kind of. It's really cool. I mean, if you're not a music theory geek too, it, it can be good for you as well. You can. It's it's a very visual way to see music theory. That maybe the piano's not as good at. You know, I mean, the pianos become our interface as electronic musicians, mm-hmm. mainly because of Bob Moog, right? Um, knowing that he needed to make sure that regular people would touch the machine in the first place, right? right. So, um, so he chose the piano, which was a smart move, right? I don't think we have electronic music like how we do until without the piano. But then once the Lindrum and, you know, all those stuff come together, this is familiar and it morphs into different things, right? It's not just, 
keyboard. It's it's a drum. This section is like an MP, right? And my sounds are in here. So um, yeah, it does a little bit of both. It's everything. So you you can't beat that. I mean, I was already familiar with the mono, which is another grid device, and um, APC, another grid device too. But this was like playing the grid, and it just it worked for me. It just you know. It's like almost like technology had to wait. I had to catch up for my instrument, <laughs> you know. So this is it's perfect for me, and cool. you can be musical again too, right? Because the pads are t- pressure sensitive and everything too. It's a very musical instrument to play. Yeah, it really and, is. And, yeah, and it's geared for chords, which I find I see a lot of people who are like drawing in things mm. or MPC guys who only have sixteen notes. So. You right. can hear the music of now. A lot of the music of now is not harmonic. Um, not because the musicians, you know, some of it is, but a lot of the times it's just how their their input device is, right? So their input device is just the a mouse and a you know in a MacBook and or sixteen pads. It's just a lot harder to really dig into harm, harmonies and and things that I think are the best part of some of the best part of music ever, you know, and, and emotionally oh, totally. too. Yeah. Yeah. It's really interesting to think about like how the tools we use affect our songwriting. Mm-hmm. Um, like obviously if you're a guitarist, your knowledge of guitar chords is going to completely influence what you're writing and maybe yeah. limit your writing in some ways. And the same, same thing works with um, our like more electronic hardware that's probably a really good segue into sort of the more songwriting related um, part of our discussion. So, um, so let's dig in. Let's dig into that as opposed to the live performance. Um, so, um, when you sit down to write, just in your studio, do you do a lot of your writing here in this studio that you're in right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, cool. Yeah, mostly. Yeah, mostly. Mostly. I mean, nice. Ideas come all over the place. Of course. You know, recorder ideas. Um, of late, a lot of I never used to do that. Where I would ha- write down um, like phrases or ideas of songs or you know topics, but uh, on my phone, a tons of them now. Like, mm. and, then, and my next album has a lot of that. Where it's like, oh, this is what this is song is going to be. I'll write down phrases that end up in the song with no melody, nothing, just words. And maybe because I'm, re- I've been reading a lot, a little bit more books and and stuff like that uh, and a lot of watching polyphonic <laughs> i don't know if it's a youtube um thing which i just love where they just go into the backgrounds of songs and oh i haven't seen that yeah probably oh that's the, that's the one that's the okay one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah i'll have to check it out yeah so he goes back into all these songs but you know um kind of like i don't know if you ever heard of middle eight same thing but polyphonic is a little better actually cool but anyway so those things you know, so I start off, but yeah, generally I start off, um, yeah, in the studio. I'm here. Cool. Some, so yeah. when when you sit down to to just like you know work on a track or get some writing done, um, what are your favorite tools there in your studio? I can see a bunch of cool things. You have a lot. I can see a lot of cool gear. Yeah. What are like your your really like staple items that you have with uh, you and and work with? Uh. Well. Okay. Well, Ableton obviously. Um, yeah, Ableton, I saw usually start on Ableton, mm-hmm. and it's mostly virtual. I'm, I'm, of late, I'm pretty traditional, so, um, like, you know, I, I listen to a lot of 60s, 70s, and 80s stuff, like singer, songwriter, or soul, so, um, I mean, I do listen to, like, electronic stuff, so there's, like, um, uh, oh man, I think names have left me, but there's a lot of things. I mean, for a minute I was like mad electronic, right? But I've kind of get gone back to to soulful things because my voice is soulful. So um, mm. so anyway, I usually start on the push with some sort of you know virtual instrument that actually feels more like an acoustic instrument, and then um, uh, Brooklyn beeping horns. Okay, and then um. <laughs> And then, so I usually start, and then, uh, I mean, basically, if you've ever watched my beat design, too, I literally, exactly how I start my beat design is how I do a song in most cases. So it's like, usually I start with chords or something first, and then I do 
of drums and then or bass and then I improvise um improvise um what you call it like um hooks so I'm hook first mm. that's why my hooks are usually strong I hook don't do first. verses first and then um and then I and then from there on I might go to one of the synths you know I have a matriarch here the sub 37 um and then I have a complete control which mm. I use sometimes but generally not as much and then machine sometimes for drums I do use machine for drums at times so it depends on the track right if I'm lost and I'm like man these drums sound suck I go to machine mm, right cool. but if it, so that's what I do but generally that's what it is and and then I have a prophet which does my electronic kind of dystopian thing I have a prophet oh wait I don't know if you can see it over there but it's over there and cool. I, I use that um so that's where uh, so certain sounds I use for certain things. You know? Cool. So starting yeah. out kind of jamming on push with chords and maybe like some rhythm and yeah. then just like riffing on some vocal ideas for a hook. That's a yeah. good place to start. <laughs> yeah. Usually just a melody, you know what I mean? Like a chord progression, some sort of progression. Yeah. I may think of it. I may kind of write it in a sense. Usually from there, the, if the, when the progression comes, Usually, I'm already starting to sing some melody, and and then and I let uh, and it's usually gibberish kind of thing. It's not really yeah. like words, and you know, and then and that's what I do from from that point on. And then then rhythm, I, the rhythm section works the other way for me. I I'm, I know some people do drums first. I don't do drums first usually. Hmm. I don't do drums because then you're usually. I feel like drums you can make fit anything, mm -hmm. right? you know. Whereas, you know, if if you're mel melodically strong, then and harmonically right, strong. right, the chords might kind of drive a little some of the emotion already. But yeah, drums don't really. Yeah, me, drums don't really have emotion. Like they yeah. do, but they don't. Like they have a pulse, but they don't really have emotion. Hmm. You know, a melody has emotion. Chords are chords in the emotion center like to me like whatever your mo, mo you know they they can be complex emotion right they, a melody can be a simple emotion like a happy a sad a this or that it can be that so that's the first strength of the emotion right and then the chords can can sway you it, you know they can give you all sorts of emotions right and they can turn a song from one way to another way so the chords that kind of you know whatever voicings you use is really great. So, yeah. I have a question for you about how you play chords on push now that we're kind of on that subject. So I see you have it in chromatic mode. So for, mm -hmm. for people who are watching and maybe haven't used a push before, um, there's, you can play in key mode where like you pick C major and it only gives you notes that are in the key, or you can pick chromatic mode, which is more like, guitar or piano where all the notes are there but the ones that light up are the ones in the key so and I see you playing you know like a lot of notes not in key so I'm kind of curious like what what's your um how do you think about playing chords on push um well I, I like I said I use chromatic like you said I use chromatic mode everybody can see that white um unlit keys or the black I'm in C key C okay so um, I'm always in the key. I'm, it's just like a piano. Like you just I mean, use it in the key of C. You never change the key. Never change. No, wow, no. that's really cool. So you have like just like really learned it, like an instrument that's always in that key. That's awesome. Yeah, never change the key. So um, and uh, I know all my scales. So yeah. yeah. Dang, I think that's probably really unique. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, so I know all my scales. Um, so I just slide it over. Gotcha. Um, I'm in chromatic. I don't use in key because I do a lot. I play a lot of soul. A lot mm -hmm. of like, yeah, you want um, those color notes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm, you know, you know, modal interchange and all that kind of yeah. thing. Wow. So I'm, I'm in and out of key, or you know, in the relative, a relative key, a relative minor, relative. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm doing a lot of that. So being in, if I'm in key, you know. If you're a Stevie Wonder fan or a jazz fan, and key would, it just would kill you. Like it just would, it would just be so bad because yeah. you couldn't play half the stuff that you wanted to play. Yeah, absolutely. you know what I mean. So 
So I'm in chromatic mode all the time. And because I play piano, I just stay there. You know, I don't switch. You know, I'm if only time I might switch is if I run out of space. You know, like if I want to just stay here and I don't want to have to. Um, mm. that, ev- that like never happens. Like Yeah, yeah. It, it, I'm generally in, you know, I, I, I'm chromatic and. And I just memorized what I memorized. Yeah, that's really know? cool. <laughs> and I just work out the numbers, like, you know, one, three, five. Right. All right. that stuff. I mean, you got to learn that. So there's, not, there's no way around it. So, yeah. You know what I mean? There's, I mean, you could just, mem- you could see it almost like a guitar where you just see the tabs, but then you don't know what's going on. Right. You know? So I just, because, you know, somebody should do push tabs. <laughs> like, yeah that'd be because that'd it, be it's cool pretty much just like a guitar where you could do that the same sh- yeah you can move the same shape around yeah just, just like, like guitar. on guitar and yeah it's a bar chord type thing cool but um yeah that's what i do uh, yeah i was thinking i was like i don't think he's even playing in the key that he's in. anyway very cool yeah. Yeah. um do you want to tell us a little bit um about your vocal setup like what's what are you recording with at home and um yeah okay at home that's a slate mic. Um, yeah, just a slate mic. Yeah. I've been through a lot of mics. I've had Neumann. Uh huh. I've had the. Um, um, they're all, you know, the SM7, which I liked a lot for its price. It was like great. I had a blue bottle with the bottle caps. Um, so I've had a lot of. I, I, I got the slate. I got the slate because I like the fact that I could change it later on because it's mm. like a virtual mic, so you could change the sound. So it emulates, you know, a U forty seven or U sixty seven. You well, know, cool, yeah. I mean, if you can afford the real deal, buy the real deal. Um, but I like the slate; it works for me. It's fine. It's good enough. You know, it's good. It's great. And um, there's another company, Townsend, that makes stuff that, at the time, they weren't. I I couldn't get it. Like it was out of stock or something. So I ended up. I got the slate, and I like the slate. Um, and I just go directly into um, Ableton, and it's really simple. <laughs> like, cool. um, it's not that crazy. On live, uh, it's just a regular show. Was at fifty eight, whatever, fifty seven, and um, and um, of late, I've been using Reason um, in the background to um, do the reverbs, hmm. and the reason I do that is so that I can record the, I like to record the mic separate from Ableton. Like, so I record the, in, we used to carry a Tascam to record our shows, but um, n- now I can record, if I wanted to, I could record the vocal, um, the, the live performance vocal separate into into um, Reason. And Reason's really like processor nothing, like it's mm. just, yeah, it's it, light, yeah. Yeah, it's just it's the king of that. Right? Nothing less. That may be in Logic. I guess Logic has become pretty good if you have a Mac. But it's just so easy to just have it in the background. Hmm. So I just use that. And this way, Ableton is just concerned about music. Cool. And there's no hitting a button by mistake. I'm, I'm a fan of simplifying. So this is actually not being run through um, Reason. It's being run, th- I mean, through Ableton. The vocals are going through Reason. Hmm. And mainly just because it's just it's a totally separate door. I could hit record, and not and not mess up what I'm doing in Ableton because there's so much going on in Ableton. I used to do vocal looping in Ableton, but if the venue's not right, it's just mm. can be a mess. Too much mm. feedback and all. That yeah, stuff. So noise and all that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I just stopped doing it. Gotcha. Yeah. Have you been so for recording when you're when you're writing songs in the studio? Have you been using comping now that Live Eleven has comping? Um, I use it's funny. I used it on certain songs on the new album. Cool, nice. Um, yeah, I use it a lot on the new album. Actually, yeah, I did use it a lot on the new album. Um, usually, what I do when I record a, on an album is I go straight through. I go straight through for a verse. Mm. But um, this album that's coming out is almost done it was a lot of like i'll just do the line i'll just do the line i just do the line so the comping came in handy there just everything was comp but the last album almost all of it was like 
at least the verse straight through. Nice. The, the, you know, just straight through, you know. But well, that's when, always nice when it works out that way. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I would punch in if I if something was like yeah, yeah. garbage. <laughs> but um, but yeah, yeah, I do a lot. I do comp. I do comp. This new record, it's funny, this new record's really like warm and earthy, but I comp the crap out of it, which is like very futuristic digital thingy. Yeah, right. So if, if anyone's not familiar with the term comping, that's just when you record like a bunch of takes of probably the same line. And then you piece them together to create um, sort of like the perfect take or maybe you use it in more of a creative way where you're not actually looking for a perfect take, but looking for like different pieces of things. Um, but so that's a that's a feature that was just added in, in uh, Live 11 and was <laughs> asked for a lot. So we're glad it's finally here. Yay. Um, let's see. Do you have any. Um, um, do you want to tell us a little bit about like how. um like the production of the song you you performed, like when you sat down to write, like what were you working with? Um, no, did you record just, that here in your studio? Yeah, um, essentially not that much different than how it was done. Just performing here. live, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the only, time, only thing is different is if I use samples. Like sometimes I do still find a loop. I, I, I come from that kind of sample thing, even though, I mean, I come from both worlds actually. But um. Yeah, it was done here. I mean, it, it had a little Moog. It was really simple. You know what? It, it was like I've been in the last couple of years, I've been back to this kind of bass, drums, keys, organ thing, right? Mm. Tried and true sounds that have a lot of character dynamically, right? I find a lot of these synth sounds, like they have character dynamically, but it's not the same. Like those sounds have been developed for so long. This is one sound being developed for like 200 years or 100 years, you know what I mean? So, so those instruments have this thing where they just, they work all the way up and down. Like a guitar works really well through the whole, um, all the octaves, a piano, forget it. It works great all the way through the octaves. There's no weird things going on. Um, I would wish that sound designers would spend more time on one instrument, like mm. one sound, and make it playable all the way up and down. So anyway, so that's what I do. So I've uh, this record was more straight up drums. Um, uh, I tried to play with the hi hat, like a like a like a shuffle. You know, like a Purdy kind of thing or Daru Jones kind of thing. Yeah, definitely felt that way. Yeah, yeah, that kind of vibe, and which people don't do anymore. And um, and then vocally, I like I like a lot of backgrounds. I'm like thirty tracks of nice backgrounds. You know, um, so I did it a lot on. I don't. There's a computer over here you can't really see, but it's a iMac 5K. It, that whole album was done on that, and it was to the max. Like this was at uh, iMac 5K, I think it's a 4.0 quad. It was like the top of the line iMac 4K. And that thing was like CPU to the tilt. Um, so I didn't have uh, that uh, Mac Pro that's back there. Um, so songs like that had a lot of a lot of tracks. And the only synth work really was, um, you know, my Moog. I, I'm left-handed, so the stuff that's on my left side, I use a lot. <laughs> cool. So, um, you know, so I use that to give it I, 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 a lot of warmth, and um, you know, to give it an analogy feeling, and then yeah. And then lately, I've been, you know, I sometimes have a cassette to to warm things up if I'm desperate. Very cool. Nice. Yeah. Well, I think we'll we'll move into the Q and A um, with the audience. I just wanted to ask before we do that, any. Uh, any last like sort of like tips, tricks um, for songwriters who are here who want to get into using live and push? Um, with live, um, you know, um, you try to, it, it, well, if, depending where you're coming from, if you're coming from like an NPC world, think of clips as like patterns and um, try to make, you know, and, and use it in that way. So, um, 
the blah, blah, blah. I always get the mode mess up. The session. Which one's the one? Which mode is the session? The is the one that you were using for live performance? Yeah. Okay. So the, use the session mode. I know a lot of people don't use the session mode. Sometimes they like to just. They're so used to the. Yeah, and you said you mostly work there for songwriting too. Yeah. Yeah. Jotting I stay down in the session mode the whole time, and I, 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 you know, I use it like patterns, and so I can play my verse and my hook. I mean. I don't understand how that's the best part of live to me. Totally. Like, it's like that in the sampling part are the two strongest parts. So you can literally play your song. I literally, when I record your song, I play it down. I go, yeah, I, I look you just record, kind of record it live over into arrangement view. Is yeah, that how cool. it all the yeah, way yeah. Down. I don't, I don't copy and paste. I play it. Down yeah. So that's such a great workflow. Yeah. I can feel how it feels like, is this going to work? Sometimes you make a mistake. You're like, Oh yeah, that could work. Maybe I'll try that. So, you know, you know, use it as a songwriting tool to just get ideas. I literally, even with vocals, especially this new album, this new album, a lot of times, the vocals are getting done, like ideas of the vocals one time. You know what I mean? So the idea, the vocals getting dropped. So, you know, try to, I would try to use that session view. I, I, I love the session view. And then, you know, and then just the other songwriting advice is just keep writing, keep, keep making. That's it, it, I mean, I know people say they get writer's block. I don't understand that. <laughs> just just write. If it's garbage, make another one. Don't be afraid. You're going to make garbage. We all make garbage. Prince made garbage, you know? Very true. Yeah. Just keep making. Love Thank it. You. Thanks, Thomas. I'm going to hand it over to Kristen to, to uh, moderate the Q&A from the attendees hey, here. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, you all. Um, that was incredible. I was just like in the background, just enjoying this incredible conversation. So thank you all for that. Thank you. Um, we had, oh, and your performance. I forgot that I wasn't even there to be like, oh my gosh, that was incredible as well. <laughs> um, yeah. So we had a, qu a few questions come through. Frankie asks, how did you get introduced to your unique instrument and how long ago did that happen? What's good, Frankie? I think I know who Frankie. I think if it's a Frankie, Frankie, what's, what's good, Frankie? Um, oh man, I, uh, I I forgot when did Push come out? First one. Um, push one? Oh my yeah. gosh, I, I actually don't even know that. Um, well, yeah. So whenever Push one came, at the time. Um, was it me and um, there was an event? It was me, Hank Shockley from Public Enemy, and Ben Casey. Oh yeah, oh. and um, Ben's my god. I, and um, and I and it was me, and he showed it to us, and oh, and Spaceman was there too, and I, I think he showed it to me then. I was like, and he said something about once he said the quartals because it's done in fourths, like everything is in fourths, like you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like Push One was twenty thirteen. Twenty thirteen, yeah. So once he saw that. I was like, oh, and we the first he said quarter. So the first thing I did was play uh, Miles Davis, right? <laughs> because um, um, whatever. I'm, uh, anyway, so yes. that whole that whole record kind of blew was like in force, right? And I was like, oh, I get it. If you're a music, I, it's weird. Like if you're a, a theory dude, you go, oh, I see what this could do. And I'm thinking Stanley Jordan. And all those guys who, that's what they do. Like, their thing was in force. It's like a trick. Uh, so I was like, oh, this is, I'm going to use this. This is mine. And, and that's, so that's when it it clicked. And I was like, yeah, I'm using that. Awesome. That sounds incredible. Yeah, what a beautiful journey. <laughs> um, awesome. Yeah, so we had another question come in asking how did you combine the background vocals and the live performance um they also asked did you use arrangement view but we know now that you use session view launching clips but um how did you kind of blend the two yeah they're just big long clips um they um and i just have so sometimes i have it, it it's not consistent all the time you know sometimes it's uh, the backgrounds are separate on a clip sometimes the backgrounds are in a big one long clip um, yeah, so, you know, uh, it, it, I, my, my setup is deceptively simple. So if it's, um, it's just simple, it's just like, sometimes it's just me playing over a two track, <laughs> you know what I mean? And sometimes it's complicated where I want to drop things out. I have songs where it's, everything is separate. So it's not, it's not one way. It's whatever, how much work I want to do for this song. 
what drives it is the performance, right? So, like, you know, um, the backgrounds might be on a separate track and s- in separate things if I feel like I need to, I want to control it and come back. Mm-hmm. So it all Love depends. It. Yeah, it, it's not, but they're there on separate, you know, you guys can't see, but it's like, just goes on. You know. Love it. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, and it kind of speaks to your creative style as well. Like depending on the mood you're in, depending on the, the show that you're performing, depending on, you know, yeah, like you said, you the wanna, amount of work that you want to put in, you know. Yeah, yeah sometimes you want to improvise too, right? You want to be able to, I think that was the key too. The key is like, I want to bring the musicianship back. So I don't want to have it too pre-planned. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like I want to, uh, the idea is to, everybody's trying to kind of get the easy way out. I hear too much stuff, too much you know, I, I want it where I can still feel that, you know, you go to a live show and, and it's electronic music and then they have the drums. And it's not the same. It's not bumping. So, but I still love the feel of a live show. Like mm-hmm. when I saw Prince as a kid, the ability, like, and he did Irresistible Bitch and he was, and you know, Lisa comes out and Wendy comes and they, and they jam it. And they was, and they jam it. And, I found like a lot of electronic shows didn't have that, you know, they, you, you could, they, nobody's jamming, nobody's, and sometimes that's the best part. It, so when you leave the show, it's like, oh, he did this, but that's not on the record. Yeah. And, um, yeah. You know what I mean? Or even Erica Badu with, um, you know, Tyrone, I mean, that, she didn't have that song. You know what I'm saying? Tyrone, she just made it up right then and there. The <laughs> version that everybody hears on the radio with the applause at the end, you know, that's, they just jammed that. They 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 made it up. So and I just but because she had a band, she could do that, mm-hmm. right? So I wanted to be able to put that in there. So Love I that. Know, yeah. Talking. No, no, that was that was perfect. Absolutely perfect. Um, we had another question come in that says, for those creating a makeshift music studio for the first time, would you mind and are you able to? Uh, take the camera around your room and show the element while you're explaining kind okay, of, I, I, and I, this may be, okay, oh, go I ahead. can't take the camera off, but what I can say, I could tell you if you're doing a studio for the first time, it's real simple now. Um, Ableton, if you're, if, if you're Mac based, um, Ableton and an M1, right? Those are the things I say, get a push. If you can't afford a push, then there's a Launchpad Pro, which I have somewhere here. It looks just like that. I use my Launchpad Pro when I'm when I'm as light as possible. Um, Speaker-wise, uh, behind me I got HS8, um, Atom A7 with a sub 10, HS8 with a sub, and then the Focal. Ooh, I don't even know what they call that Focal. Um, it's like the eight-inch Focal. Um, but if I was gonna this if I was gonna recommend any speaker right off the bat, it'd probably be the Yamaha's. I but I mix mainly on the A7S. Um, so if you could, it, my but it's with the sub and the thing, it's like three thousand dollars. So it may not be for everyone. So um, I would pick the um, next stop is the Yamaha. They just don't have they're they're flat, which a speaker needs to be. So it just doesn't have as much detail. Um, what else do I recommend? Oh, any UA audio interface, any one of them. So United um, Universal Audio Interface, and I actually the Slate mic is on sale, I think, and um, th- th- I I recommend the Slate mic, and then if you need an external synthesizer, um, you know um I love Moog, um, uh, but that's just me, um, so any Moog. If you want some warmth, I think that's it. That's all you really need. I'm looking around here. Yeah, that's it. That's all you really need. Oh, and um, proper hard drive. So you need like a RAID hard drive, at least a RAID hard drive. I have a RAID hard drive and I have two SSDs, some sort of backup system. In fact, those are the things you should get first. Back up your music. Yeah, so I would <laughs> get the RAID hard drive first. Um, it, the best way would be a Synology um, and a QNAP, which you can't see is in the back there. Um, uh, so have a nice QNAP. I do video as well, so you need those things. But a QNAP with a with a um, with an SSD. Actually, everybody 
should have a RAID drive if you have a computer. You don't, your data, you're making data. Uh, you know, you could lose your equipment, but if you lose your data, you're gonna re it's gonna really hurt because you're gonna lose your songs. <laughs> So yeah. your song, so data is like so important. I know people who, you know, do video shoots and they don't back up their videos or dump, uh, or music. I have people who've asked for tracks from me, from years back. If my if I didn't keep that data, what's the point, right? Mm -hmm. So make sure you have some sort of either a RAID system or a NAS uh, 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 or, you know, system that backs up your data. Um, that and also Backblaze, if you want to. That's another thing to pay for Backblaze every month. Everything is backed up to, and then you. So if you have those two things, and you know you can't be a professional setup if you don't have that. If you don't have any of those two things, you're not a professional setup. You're just joking. Um, awesome. So make sure you have that, and that's it. Perfect. Well, that I mean, thank you for answering that question. Everybody now is gonna have like the best studio setup. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for that. Absolutely. We're going to try to, to, to uh, squeeze in one last question from Micah and it, you know, is, is a pretty fun question, but um, do you too wish that there was a push with a 12 by 12 matrix? <laughs> uh, um, um, Roger Lynn makes the instrument, which is similar to that. It's not a push, but, um, it, I played it. I actually met him and played it. It's very similar. Um, it. I don't know. I mean, I guess it would be cool. It just would be. So, I wonder what size it would be. I. You know what I wish more. I wish that there was a, 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 a battery powered one, that that you could charge, and was wirelessly Bluetooth, so that I could so that. I could go someplace and it's not drawing power from my laptop. Um, and I have some sounds that I actually use on, I have an iPad Pro, I actually got the new one too. And I wish that it wouldn't have to plug from that either. Like I could just use it and it could be, you know, it could be battery powered, it just works. Um, I, I would actually like that more than more notes. But I mean, yeah. more notes wouldn't hurt, but I, I'd rather that. I'd rather. I mean, you're it. killing it on the current setup, so. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I would like it to be portable in the sense where it doesn't have a ver like a small version that I can carry around, you know, use on. Because my MacBook Air is so small, you know, when you do these shows, you're carrying so much stuff. The less I have, the better, you know. And then I could be, I could feel more like, you know, I envy guitarists because they could just, they got an acoustic guitar, they just like, boop, boop, I just play. <laughs> So that would be, Even that like can that. be something else as well. But yeah, yeah incredible. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Thomas. Thank you, Mari. This was wonderful. If you guys didn't see in the chat, Mari um, is in is giving you all 25% off Ableton Live or Push um, if you just send her an email. So the email is dropped in the chat. Feel free to copy and paste that email. And we'll also follow up with our post show email, which will include her email address as well and ways to connect with both her and Thomas. Mm -hmm. um, amazing, amazing performance, amazing information. Thank you for sharing it all. Thank you for being with us, Mari Thank and you. Thomas. It has been our absolute pleasure to host this in session. Thank y'all. Thanks Thank so you. much for having us. Thanks and for thanks, having us. Please join us again and, on, oh, don't uh, forget. for our next. Oh. Yeah, oh, sorry. Ahead. Don't forget, no. "Permission to Live" is the album. It's out everywhere, and I have beat design every week. A new episode on YouTube this week. It's gonna be fire, and I want to thank everybody for letting me spend some time with y'all. Awesome, okay. perfect. Join us July twenty second for a collaboration at Artist Collectives in the Virtual Age. That is our next in session. And again, I am Kristen, aka Like Water, and this was in session. <laughs>